Okay, welcome everyone to the section on the graduate student orientation um, info session for those of you that are just joining us. Um, so my name is Tomas Ocampo. I am the current president of the Graduate Student Association here at UCSC, and I'll be emceeing the presentation today. So I'm a third year student in the politics department <clears throat> with a designated emphasis in Latin American and Latino studies. And on behalf of everyone, all our presenters today, thank you very much for being here. Uh, we'll be walking you through some crucial information about graduate life here at UCSC. So before we get there, I do wanna go over some Zoom logistics. So everyone that has joined us, you uh, will be muted to start our presentation, but if you can, please do turn your camera on so that we are able to see each other. But of course, if you are not able to, that's perfectly okay. Um, if you do wanna be able to see who's speaking, you can toggle the modes to look at the current speaker, as well as take a look at the gallery of participants. Uh, feel free to use the chat box to ask questions or engage with campus leadership. And we will record the presentation so that way we can make it available to those of you that uh, maybe I will request to see this information later for those that are still joining. So I can see that we still have people coming in. So for those of you that has just have just joined, I'm just uh, going over some of the Zoom logistics for our presentation today. Again, please feel free to use the chat box to ask questions to our presenters, and they will be uh, happy to answer your questions. So this presentation will be recorded. The slides will also be made available at the Grad Division website. And we've enabled the live transcription for those of you that may need to be able to uh, need that to access it. So if you're just joining us now, welcome to the graduate student orientation. Again, my name is Tomas, I'll be walking you through this presentation. And I just went over the Zoom logistics and then the next component will uh, share some more information before we get started with our presenters. I'll, write, I'll just take a couple of moments to read over the land acknowledgement. So the land on which we gather is the unceded territory of the Awawas speaking Uyuki tribe, the Ama Matsun tribal band comprised of the descendants of indigenous people taken to mission Santa Cruz and San Juan Batista during Spanish colonization of the central coast is today working hard to restore traditional stewardship practices on these lands and to heal from historical trauma. So our agenda for today will consist of uh, hearing from the various divisions of campus. So we'll first hear from the Division of Graduate Studies and then from the Graduate Student Commons and Graduate Student Association here on campus. Then we'll hear from the Student Health Center, CAPS, SHOP, the DRC, and all the other resources available to students. So then we'll get a chance to hear from the Dean of Students and all the services uh, on campus like sub support and basic needs before hopefully we have time to get to some questions at the end. Just a note to our presenters for today, please keep in mind that we have a lot of slides to get through, a lot of presentations. So uh, please do your best to try to keep us all on time. And that way we get a chance to hear from everybody. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Dr. Peter Beal to continue on this next part of our presentation. Well, um, Peter, I think you're uh, muted. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Thank you. So Thomas, uh, thank you so much for, um, uh, for starting us off. And uh, um, I would like to personally welcome all of you uh, to our graduate division and to uh, UCSC. 
I'm your um, Vice Provost and Dean uh, of uh, Graduate Studies. So I'm here to help you. I'm your advocate, and uh, I'm really happy to take a couple of minutes to introduce you to the wonderful team I'm privileged uh, uh, to, to lead. I know it's a, a very exciting day uh, for all of you, but it seems to be also uh, a day where, uh, well, you're excited, but you might be even a little nervous, and uh, that is good. You're coming to a new place uh, from around the world. Uh, I talked this morning to um, about 200 international students, so um, you're coming to a new place, you're coming uh, to UC Santa Cruz uh, after a very difficult time. And I hope and we hope that all your family and friends are safe uh, and uh, that you also are ready uh, here. Um, we think we turned the corner, uh, but uh, especially you in the classroom, you will see uh, that um, there is still um, uh, things you have to uh, pay attention to and we will talk about those uh, uh, things later. So I hope you're well. I hope you're safe. I hope you're excited. I hope you uh, are ready to start uh, 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 this uh, your program at this world class uh, um, uh, university. But I also hope that uh, um, you uh, just don't be in your labs and you really do what you will hear today. Uh, take on the services which we uh, make available for you. Number one. Uh, if you are stressed, and I can only really highlight uh, one more time, uh, in this very difficult couple of years, do please uh, uh, talk to your friends, your colleagues, your fellow students, uh, take on the resources uh, uh, we have. Uh, don't forget, we are living in Santa Cruz. I'm here for a year and I haven't seen everything. It's beautiful. Uh, take uh, take a break. Go up uh, where your lab is uh, uh, in the mountains and do a hike or take your bike and really enjoy also uh, this beautiful uh, landscape uh, here. Um, next slide, please. I think uh, somebody else has to click the button. Yes, and here we are. Here yeah, um, I'm right now in Kerr Hall. Uh, so when you walk through this building uh, to the main door, it's on the right side, there's our office suite. Uh, I have an open door. I know we have almost 600 students, almost 400 here. Might be a little bit difficult, but uh, I'm here for you. Uh, uh, please do uh, reach out to us if you want to have a meeting in person or on Zoom or groups of you. And of course, I will take uh, all the opportunities I have uh, with the programming to, to be there, to meet you in person and to welcome uh, you in person. So our graduate division really likes to help you to navigate uh, through uh, uh, um, uh, UCSC. Uh, and we are offering, as you will hear, both uh, uh, co-curriculum and uh, uh, curricula um, events and uh, please do take notes and the slides will be uh, available for all of you uh, so that you really uh, can take advantage not just of your wonderful programs but also what we uh, offer here you have also our emails uh, you can always reach out to me my email here is at uh, uh, at the bottom of the page so please do come to Kerr Hall uh, check it out and uh, uh, and again I would like to uh, to uh, personally uh, welcome you next slide please Next slide. Yes, and uh, here we are. Uh, what is better to introduce this power team we have? And I'm so happy uh, um, uh, working together with uh, our associate dean, uh, Don Smith, our assistant dean, Stephanie Kasher, and uh, uh, Barbara Smee, uh, our ex uh, executive assistant. So uh, it's a wonderful team. We are here for you. We are representing you. We are advocating for you on all levels at UCSC, but also at the administration. And then uh, next uh, slide, please. Uh, really important for you uh, here, our admissions and operations uh, uh, team, uh, starting out with uh, uh, Judy Class uh, and uh, uh, Marissa Marcial. Uh, uh, Michelle Montemayor, Raven, uh, uh, Iverson Davis, and Audrey uh, Morris. So these are people you might not see all the time, but they, number one, got you here. They helped you and continue to help you to answer any questions. Uh, and, uh, uh, and some of you might have met them via email already. And then, of course, our uh, student services team, which is the next uh, slide. Um, um, and uh, please, I don't read all the, the names here. Don't want to take too much time, uh, but here uh, is a whole 
uh, group of people who help you uh, and to uh, can help you to really um, uh, do wonderful programming. And most important, uh, to meet uh, uh, people uh, outside your discipline, outside your lab, your uh, archive, and uh, your studio. And that is important. It is important because we're really the university of interdisciplinarity, and interdisciplinarity begins with people representing that. And I really do hope that uh, uh, you have uh, the opportunity and take the opportunities and do one of those uh, programs here. Uh, at uh, at our institution. So uh, before leading over uh, to our next team member, I really would like to welcome you again uh, uh, to this wonderful university, uh, to uh, your program and to everything really we can do. Please do reach out to us anytime. We are here for you and I wish you uh, a very, very good start here. And if you have any questions, I'm staying on. Uh, you can either do it in the chat or later on. So thank you very much uh, for being here. And for the next couple of, uh, uh, couple of years, uh, we do everything uh, we can uh, to uh, support you. Thank you. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Dana Eugenio, and I'm one of the graduate student services coordinator with the graduate division. And I just want to welcome you all and congratulate you all again um, as you're joining us here at UC Santa Cruz. So we're really grateful that you all are here. Um, so I'm part of the student services team in the graduate division, and we provide support to help our graduate students from everything ranging from financial aid, um, to any academic appointments that you all may have, such as teaching assistants, uh, uh, teaching assistant appointments or graduate student researcher positions. So we can help you if you all have questions such as how do I go on part time status or what paperwork do I need to fill out uh, to graduate? So and, and everything in between. Um, so we are here to support you throughout your academic career. Um, so on this slide, um, or I think there's a slide missing, so I'll just um, read for you. But um, I have two resources um, that I wanna highlight for you. The first resource that the graduate division has is if you have questions regarding policies or procedures, that's gonna actually be on our website in the graduate student handbook. Um, so I think Jeff one of, is on and he can post that in the chat. Um, so yeah, so this handbook is extremely helpful so if you need some quick answers about um, the different policies, for example, if you want information about becoming a graduate student researcher, uh, you can find that information here. Um, and again, this is a great resource. So if you ever email any of us, um, this is probably what we're going to reference. Oh, thank you. That's the correct slide. Um, yeah, if you ever email any of us, this is what we're going to cite um, for our policies. Um, and so the second resource that I want to also mention to you is your department or your program staff advisor. Um, so we work pretty closely with each of your advisors in your individual program. So I really encourage you all uh, to find out who your staff advisor is and to build a relationship with them because they really want to help you. Um, and so everyone should be assigned um, a staff advisor um, who can assist you with any of the paperwork that you're going to need um, from our department. Um, and they can answer a lot of your questions um, that is specific to your individual program. So again, I encourage you all to uh, meet your um, staff advisors in your individual programs. Um, and so, and then I think on the next slide or the slide that we were previously on, um, I wanted to talk about um, how do we, how do I get paid? Okay, so this is a question on everyone's mind. Um, so we made this really handy uh, cheat sheet uh, for you all. And again, um, this will be available on the website later on um, through the slides. So if you need to access it later, you can go ahead and get it there. Um, so UCSD, we have three different systems depending on the type of payment that you're expecting. And if you want to receive your payments directly to your bank account, um, so that's via direct deposit, um, you're going to have to sign up for direct deposit in each of these three different systems. Um, so again, you'll need to sign up to receive direct deposit in each of these three different systems if um, you want to get it directly to your bank account. So I just wanted to highlight that for you all. Um, so let's just go through these systems really quickly. Um, and again, if you have questions uh, throughout the presentation, go ahead and um, chat them. And we'll also give our email later on. So if you have any questions after this, you can contact us. But um, so for the first system, um, it's for uh, the financial aid office and the student business services office. So I think if you go to the next slide, 
for me. Thank you. Um, yeah, so this, uh, these payments, they're regarding your tuition um, and or anything uh, that will pay for your tuition, specifically like loans. Um, and this will also highlight um, stipends um, for domestic students. So in order to see any funds that you're expecting uh, to pay for your tuition, you're going to see it in your My UCSC portal. So everyone should have access to that. Um, and that's where you're going to see any like charges that you may have or anything. Um, and so if you're expecting any funds, again, to pay for your tuition, you can log into your My UCSC portal and you'll, you should be able to see it there. Um, and so if you have questions specifically about your direct deposit, you can contact Student Business Services. Um, and they can help you um, if you're having any issues with direct deposit. Um, and so again, if you're having um, any issues, like if you're, you notice that you're supposed to be receiving um, uh, something to pay off your tuition and you're not seeing it in your account or it's not getting paid, go ahead and contact your advisor or you can contact us and then we can look into the issue for you. Okay. Um, and so this again, um, for domestic students as well, if you're expecting to receive any fellowships or stipends, this is gonna be the system that you should look into, okay? All right, so the second system, thank you. Um, this is for uh, students who um, have any employment. There's a little typo on this slide. It says uh, for students who are academic student employees, but that's not necessarily true. If you are um, employed by the university, um, this is also the system that you're gonna be seeing it in. Um, so uh, you'll need to set up your account um, in UC Path. Um, that's a that's a separate portal, um, and this is where you can see anything regarding your paychecks. Um, and so, if you need assistance um, in this system, you're going to have to contact um, your your payroll office um, uh, or um, your payroll account assistant or specialist, um, and they should be able to help you. Um, and then again, if you're expecting or using your um, uh, using your paycheck or any of your funds that you're receiving through your paycheck to pay for your tuition, you're going to have to do that in the My UCSD portal. Okay, so it is, it's a separate system. And so they don't translate very well together. Okay, so again, this is for anyone who's employed by the university. So you can, you're, you should be able to access it through your UC Path portal. Okay, and then finally, yeah, thank you. Um, so the Office of Financial Administrative Services and Transactions, or FAST, an accounts payable office, they're going to be able to help you with any reimbursements or miscellaneous fellowships, such as like a one-time special grant. Um, and also, if you are an international student, this is the system that you want to pay attention to. Um, and so um, all of those payments are going to be processed through um, FAST and AP. Um, and there's a little bit of additional paperwork with this system. It's a little more complex. Um, so if you have questions, their contact information is in the bottom corner. So I'd su suggest that you um, take down that their information. If you have any questions about this one, it's a little more um, complex, as I said. Um, and so, um, yeah, so if you need assistance, I would contact FAST or AP, um, the AP office, or you can also contact your, again, your um, staff advisor and they can um, assist you as well. Um, so I know that was a lot of information that I threw out at all of you. Um, so we'll leave the chart up so you can take a screenshot if you need to. Um, and again, the, the slides will be available um, on the website after um, orientation. So if you need to access it again, you can access it. And again, uh, you can contact us if you have any questions. Um, and then maybe Jeff, can you type in if you haven't already? I haven't looked at the chat. Um, you can also contact us um, at GSS group at ucsc.edu. So if you have any questions, any of the student services team members um, will get that email and we'll be able to help you or at least point you in the right direction. So um, I know that was a lot of information. So thank you so much. Um, and then I will pass it off, I believe to Sonia. Thank you, Dana. Welcome everyone. I add my congratulations to Dana on being accepted to UC Santa Cruz. And I hope that you will do as Dice Provost and Dean Peter Beal suggested and check out Santa Cruz and the campus and surroundings and get out. Um, I am the professional development coordinator for the graduate division and I provide via this menu, which I will drop in the chat, uh, professional development programming to add to your uh, academic instruction here on campus. All of our events um, are hybrid, 
So you have the option of coming to them at the Graduate Student Commons, your space here on campus, or attending via Zoom. Um, the menu structure of our website is under construction. It's being redesigned and eventually uh, professional development and events will appear on the top menu. But for now, you'll find it um, under the top menu choice um, under students. And then you'll select professional development and that will take you to the, that site that I dropped in there. Um, and that is on this slide. Uh, I have a lot on offer this fall, I encourage you to explore um, all, everything on that menu and pick and choose what you can do. Um, also, I'll just add that if you do come in person, you will receive free food. I am serving vegan box lunches for everybody who can make it to the in-person um, events. Um, next slide. Um, in addition to um, putting on professional development programming, I also organize the Grad Slam event and the Graduate Symposium. Grad Slam is also known as the Three Minute Thesis Competition. It is a communication contest, and you have three minutes to explain your area of uh, research or academic study to a non-expert audience, and um, it is for cash prizes. Um, the symposium is a little um, less intense, um, but it is also a communication um, endeavor uh, where you get to showcase your research in a variety of media. Um, and I think that's all I'd like to say at this time, um, in the interest of time, and I will now pass it on to Lorado. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Lerato Anderson. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion in the Graduate Division. I'm really excited to meet you all. Um, so essentially, my role as DEI Director is to help support graduate students from minoritized backgrounds. This includes first-generation students, Black, Indigenous, and students of color, queer students, differently abled students, low-income students, women in STEM, and many, many more. Um, my role includes, but is not limited to, helping to find funding to help support programming, as well as funding to go directly into your pockets. Um, I also help with strategic planning around how UCSC can better serve our underserved grad students. I help build new programs and help strengthen and build up existing programs for underserved students. And I advocate for individual students or groups of students and then finally consult with various offices and academic divisions, departments about DEI issues. I pride myself on keeping an open door for grad students. So please don't hesitate to email me here, um, lorado at ucsc.edu. If you'd like to set up an appointment, um, we could talk about your support, help with the specific situation, like if you're encountering bias, you wanna start or run or consult about a DEI program in your department, if there's a grant you'd like me to apply for on students' behalf, or if you have any questions about DEI-related plans, decisions, or if you just want to check in. I love just connecting with students, talking through your plans, figuring out next steps. And I'll also be holding weekly office hours, so just stay tuned for an email about the day and time of that. So thank you and welcome. I really look forward to connecting with you all. And with that, I'll pass it to Rachel. Thanks, Lorado. Hi, everyone. My name is Rachel Newman, and I use she, her pronouns. Welcome to UC Santa Cruz. I'm really delighted for you to be here today. As a director of graduate student life, I support your co-curricular experiences by providing student life programming. I also manage the Graduate Student Commons, a building designated specifically for your use. The Graduate Student Commons is a central hub on campus where our mission is to create a sense of community and belonging. The Graduate Student Commons is located in the Cory Plaza above Uveda Cafe and across from the Bay Tree Bookstore. The GSE has staffed open hours Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can reserve study rooms for personal study or office hours if you're a TA and you need an office space. You can also obtain 24-hour access by stopping by the GSE to get your grad card activated. 
I'd also mentor and advise a governing board of grad students who make decisions about the space and the programs we run. I'd like to introduce you to Dory, the GSA vice president who will provide more insight on the GSA, GSC programs and how to get involved. Dory? Thanks, Rachel. Um, so as Rachel said, my name is Dory. I'm the GSC vice president, not the GSA. Those are two different organizations, but it took me several years to figure that out too. So <laughs> no worries with the acronyms. Um, as everyone said, welcome to UCSC. Um, I'm also a grad student. I remember being in your shoes. I won't tell you how many years ago, <laughs> but um, I'm in the ecology and evolutionary biology department. Um, and I got involved in the GSC because our department is, is located off campus. And I was looking for a place that felt sort of like a home, like a place to build community on campus. Um, and as Peter mentioned, you know, it's really important to try to meet people who are outside of your little bubble um, and expand your point of view. And so the GSC really um, kind of takes on this role to help build these types of connections and build community among grad students. So um, you can see on our slide here, we um, have grad student driven, grad student run programming. Um, we have a whole team of, of leaders across the different divisions who sort of make decisions about what sorts of events that we have um, and host. And honestly, a lot of what we do is just make sure grad students are having fun. Um, so make sure you keep your eyes peeled. We send out a weekly newsletter with all of the events that are available. Um, I think Rachel's putting some links in the chat as well. Um, I also just want to highlight, um, since you're all first years, this is the first year that we're launching something called the Graduate Student Peer Mentor Program. Um, I know when I first came into grad school, there were so many questions I had, um, and it's tough to know where to go. And so this program will help link you with older graduate students um, who have the experience to know sort of if you're having these, you know, very grad student specific struggles. It's a different experience from undergrad in a lot of ways, um, and there's definitely some hidden curriculum that you have to navigate. And so this program will help connect you with older graduate students on campus who can help you navigate through that. Um, so I really, really encourage everyone to sign up for this program. It's really cool. We've been working on launching this for about a year. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited that, that this is getting started. So definitely keep your eyes peeled on that. I think we have one more slide. Someone could advance the slide. This is just sort of a, a get to know us slide. Um, so this is our grad student leadership team. Um, as I said, this is a whole graduate student run and managed um, organization. So all of us are grad students in the different divisions um, and we will be at the grad student resource fair. Um, I encourage you to come meet us um, and learn about the different ways that you can get involved. And even if you know, you're overwhelmed and don't have time to join our leadership team, which we would love, um, you can always come to our events. Um, so yeah, you will, I think, automatically get our <laughs> newsletters um, because you're on the grad student listserv. Um, so definitely scan those through every week and see if there's something that can help you with either social events or professional development or um, different aspects of wellness. We've kind of got it all. <laughs> so um, follow us on Instagram for updates. Um, also Facebook page, website, all of the above. Um, and thanks so much for your time. I look forward to getting to meet some of you. Hi everyone, I'm so excited to welcome new students to UC Santa Cruz. My name is Dan Kapolsky and I'm the Vice President of Shared Governance for the Graduate Student Association. So the GSA, the Graduate Student Association, is the student government body for UC Santa Cruz graduate students. All UC Santa Cruz graduate students are considered members of the GSA. And then we have a council that's composed of an executive board along with one representative from each department. So if you want to represent your department, you can step up and join the GSA Council to do that. Our monthly meetings, though, are open to all graduate students. Rather, whether or not you're a department rep, you can come to those meetings, discuss issues of concern with other graduate students. So our first meetings, our meetings for this quarter are tentatively planned for the first Monday of each month. So the first one would be October 3rd planning to do those 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. And we'll send out an email as we finalize that with an agenda and a Zoom link to that. We're gonna be holding those meetings remote for at least fall quarter. So you can come in person, we're gonna meet in the GSC building, or you can join us remote over Zoom uh, for those meetings. Uh, we do several different things as an organization. We advocate around graduate student issues. 
uh, both on campus at the state level as well. Also holds some events and uh, professional development for graduate students. Uh, you can see the executive board displayed there. We do have a couple of vacancies open on the board and new students might consider running for that secretary position if you're interested in getting more involved. That's available along with those department positions I mentioned. Another big thing we do as an organization is send GSA representatives to various committees around campus. So committees on the academic Senate or other bodies of the school. So look out for some emails I'll send out recruiting graduate students to serve on those committees and reply and express your interest if you're interested in getting involved in that way. Uh, thank you so much. Looking forward to meeting and talking to many of you over the coming years. Yes, I want to express the same sentiments. And next, we're going to hear from the Student Health Services. I believe that's uh, Melissa. Yes. Hi, everyone. Welcome to UCSC. My name is Melissa Miller, and I use she and her pronouns. And I'm the Assistant Director of Clinic Support, Billing and Insurance. I've been at the Student Health Center for about eight years now. And the Student um, Health Center and Student Health Services is located across from College 9 and John, John R. Lewis College, right in the middle of campus. And here is a picture of um, the Student Health Center and our Counseling and Psychological Services and Pharmacy. Next slide, please. Oh, that's not the right slide, but um, there we go. Thank you. Um, these are the different services that we actually have at Student Health um, Services. So there's actually a lot of different departments that you can actually go to. We have optometry services, laboratory services, x-ray, case management, all of our medical providers, dietitian, our student health outreach and promotion, our counseling and psychological services and psychiatry and pharmacy are all located in the same um, area at student health services. Next slide, please. And any registered student can use the student health center. You do not need to have UC SHIP. So you're able to speak to one of our triage nurses. You're able to call our 24 hour nurse advice line. Maybe you woke up with a rash and you just want to know, should you come in, be seen, or is it something that's fine if maybe you take a Benadryl or something like that. So these are all the services that we actually provide at the Student Health Center. One thing to remember is that we only bill the student health, um, student UC SHIP, the student health insurance plan, and then the acronym is UC SHIP. So we don't build outside insurance, but you are able to go ahead and come to the student health center. And if you do have UC SHIP, your care actually starts at the student health center. So we waive your copay, we waive your deductible. If you do want to be seen off campus for non-urgent medical care, then you do need to get a referral from us. So that's something that you do want to keep in mind. And if you do have UC SHIP, the way that you get your insurance card is by downloading the Sydney app. And that way you'll always have your insurance card on your phone. And if you do want to go ahead and actually have a hard copy of your insurance card, you can come into the insurance department and they can always print one out for you. Or you can reach out to Anthem Blue Cross to go ahead and get a copy of your insurance card mailed to you. Next slide, please. So with the student health insurance plan, you see SHIP, if you go off campus for medical care, you do have a $10 copay. If you go off campus for a mental health visit, you do need to get a referral first, but there is no copay for that, which is really great. If you go to an urgent care, there is a $25 copay. Emergency room is a $125 copay. 
and your insurance plan does have a $300 deductible. If you do end up having labs done, um, any type of imaging. So it's really good to get all of the imaging and radiology type of care at the student health center because you're not paying your copay, you're not paying your deductible, which is really nice. And we do have some new benefits this year. Um, if you needed a ride off campus to get care, there's actually 12 round trip um, ride share rides that you could get through Lyft um, to make it to those off campus appointments and then to have a return ride back to campus. And then we actually have a new online mental health platform that we're going to get some flyers for called Lyra Health, which will allow you to have any type of online mental health visit um, right away to access care. So that's really gonna be beneficial. Maybe you need to speak to somebody that about anxiety and you'll be able to do that um, from your phone or your computer. And then the other thing that we have, which is really great is the medical care assistance fund. So let's say you need to have an unexpected surgery and you've already been on UC ship for one quarter, you can actually apply for the fund and it goes anywhere from $500 to $3,000 to help with any type of medical or mental health type of expense that you've had to pay out of pocket. And um, always a reminder that you do have live health online in case the student health center is closed and you do need to get medical care. Maybe you don't feel like having to go to an urgent care and you just want to speak to a medical professional and the nurse advice line said, you know, I think you should really have an appointment for that. You can go ahead and pay your $10 copay and have a telehealth visit um, with a provider in the live health online. And you can even do that too. Um, and there wouldn't be a copay if you needed to speak to somebody, uh, you know, with psychiatry or mental health, which is really, really great too. Next slide, please. And that I'm going to go ahead and hand it off to Richard. And please feel free to reach out to us at the Student Health Center give us a call on our website. I'm here five days a week. If you have any questions, please feel free to find out about those benefits, reach out to us. We're here for you and we wanna help you succeed. And we love to hear from you all and have you come into the health center and make sure you're getting that preventative care, your physicals, your vision visits, getting your dental, visits done as well. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Richard Enriquez, and I'm one of the psychologists over at CAPS, and, and welcome to the uh, uh, graduate program. I was reflecting on how exciting it was when I was getting my graduate uh, education, but I also know that it can be very stressful, and I think that's uh, where CAPS can come in and to help support you. Next slide. So we offer a, a wide range of uh, mental health services. Um, the e easiest way to find out about our services is to go to our CAPS website at caps.ucsc.edu. You'll find that we have in individual brief counseling services, but we also have some uh, drop-in services like for mindfulness, and we have groups that are available. All of our uh, as assessment, crisis assessment, brief therapy groups, and drop-ins are all free of charge. There's no cost for you to participate in that. Our psychiatry services do have a fee. It's $100 for initial evaluation and $50 for each visit after that. However, if you have ship insurance, which I think you know most of you do have ship insurance, that that fee is picked up by uh, your insurance and there's no, no copay. Uh, next slide. So I just want you to know that the way to get into our system is to give us a call at 831-459-2628. Um, and you can ask for an initial assessment appointment. That assistant assessment appointment is usually about 30 minutes. It's just an opportunity to get to know you a little better, 
to find out what your concerns are and to be able to match you with the services that would be most appropriate for you. Um, all of our services, like I had said, that are on campus are free. There's no cost to you. And to let you know, it is a confidential service. So it's kind of nice to be able to talk to somebody uh, who is going to keep your information uh, confidential. Next slide. Uh, we do have a uh, service called Therapy Assistance Online because we know that you're really busy and sometimes you want to do maybe something on your own or at your own time and pace. So I encourage you to go to our caps.ucsc.edu and from that page, you can see this link and check out our um, Therapy Assistance Online. Again, that's also free. Next slide. All right, and like I had mentioned before, we have a lot of groups and workshops, but I just want to point out that we do have a couple that are specifically for you. We have a graduate men's group and a graduate women's group. Go online. Uh, it's not up yet. It should be up by the end of next week, and you can see all the groups that we have available, including the graduate men's group and graduate women's group. Uh, I think it's a great service there for you to, to be able to get, get together, support one another, and be supported by the counseling department. And lastly, we do have what's called Grad Talk. If you go to our webpage and look at our calendar, um, Grad Talk is a drop in if you want to talk to one of us for a brief amount of time about a single issue or to find more information about the counseling department. Come, come on in, find it on our calendar, and there'll be a link. Uh, next slide, please. Oh, there's no more next slides. All right. So, Jorge Brew, I believe, is next. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, my name is Jorge Bru. I use they, them pronouns or any pronouns. I'm the alcohol and other drug educator for the campus, and I've been here for about eight or nine years. Um, I'm a first gen graduate of UCSC uh, in the community studies department way back around 20 years ago is when I graduated. Um, so I'm here to talk to you about shop, student health at outreach and promotion. Here's just some pictures of our student leaders from the past. Uh, next slide, please. So our number one goal is to make sure that all of you are thriving in a college environment. Um, we're here to support you using the harm reduction approach and unconditional positive regard. So we're not here to promote any kind of abstinence of anything, just to meet you wherever you're at um, in relation to alcohol and other drug prevention, intervention, sexual health, uh, reproductive health, and mental health and wellness. Next slide, please. Uh, we are by students and for students. We couldn't do all the wonderful work we do, so that's why we have more uh, student photos here. Our student leads, our student volunteers, ambassadors, lead ambassadors are all the ones who kind of really get out there and do the work that, that we all work together to envision and create. Um, the photos here uh, featured our Meg Kobe, our director, who's been with uh, shops and health outreach and promotion for about 20 years. Amber, who's been here for about four years, and myself, and we have two new uh, full-time staff on an associate director, uh, Amy Mengen, and uh, Emily is our new mental health work uh, educator. Next slide, please. So in our alcohol and other drug education, we have um, two primary resources for you. One is our Party Like a Slug program to help you create a safe party plan um, and ask any questions you have about different substances. Um, and then we have the Cove, which is uh, the space that I oversee. It's a lounge for all of you to enjoy. It's our collegiate recovery community. So anyone who is wanting to just come relax in a comfortable space here on campus where we have coffee, tea, snacks, a relaxation room with a massage chair and a recliner. We have two computers, printing, free printing, um, filtered water, gender neutral restroom, and just space where you could set up and do, do work, socialize, or just be on your own relaxing, recovering. Um, that's the Cove. Um, and we have any questions that you want answered around sexual health and reproductive health. We have our professional staff and peer educators around uh, to support you with that at SHOP. Um, and we have the Common Co-op where we sell safer sex supplies at reduced cost, much cheaper than you would find online or anywhere else, uh, like at CVS or Walgreens. Um, we have our Slug Love workshops and other presentations you can ask for around consent, relationship, communication, um, all different kinds of workshops that we can tailor specifically to what you are looking for. And we have the birth control patrol, which helps it with drop-in contraceptive option uh, options education. 
so we encourage you to stop by the Cove or shop. Uh, it's actually two different locations. Shop is in the Student Health Center right next to the pharmacy. And the Cove is located right above the East Field and right below Cal College, Cal Apartments in a mobile modular. Um, all right, let's go to the next slide. Oh, this is a photo of uh, the Cove team from a couple of years ago. We're right outside the Cove there. And that's the view of the Cove. It overlooks the East Field. Um, and we're here just to provide harm reduction resources in a, a substance-free space for you to just come relax, like I said earlier. You can go to the next slide. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> that's the end of our presentation. We're trying to go really fast, but we have a lot of uh, people to present. But here's our Instagram, if you don't mind pulling out your phone and adding us. Uh, following us on Instagram at Slugs We Got You. That's our shop uh, Instagram, Party Like a Slug for our Party Safe program and UCSC The Cove. And our websites are shop.ucsc.edu or partylikeaslug.com. Hope to see you soon. Take care. And now Kara's up next. Thank you, Jorge. Hi, folks. My name is Yesenia Mergosa Fernandez. I use she, her, and Ea pronouns, and I am a uh, prevention education coordinator at the CARE office, and CARE stands for Campus Advocacy Resources and Education. We are the sexual and interpersonal violence uh, advocacy and education resource on campus. We offer confidential and free support for folks that may have experienced um, or been impacted by sexual or interpersonal violence. Um, something that's unique about the care office is that we provide support to all UCSC community members. So that includes undergrads, graduate students, faculty, staff, and any UCSC affiliates. Uh, for example, it could be um, a parent of someone that um, attends UCSC. We could provide support there. Um, so uh, next slide, I'm going to go super fast here too, because we'll be at the um, fair later on too if anyone has questions. So um, this is just our location. We are located in the Oaks Academic Building on the second floor. Um, as mentioned, we are free and confidential. All our advocates um, within the care office are certified uh, peer counselors that are certified by the state of California to provide those advocacy services. We support folks with um, things like emotional support, um, accommodations, academic housing, and um, educational um, information. We also provide all of that. Um, and we also offer educational workshops through our prevention team. Um, we have had a lot of graduate students reach out in the past regarding questions on how to support other students, their undergraduate students that might come to them um, asking them or telling them about an experience that they may have had. And we're always happy to take on those questions um, and provide the, the appropriate um, information in that sense. Um, here's just our information. Uh, it's all confidential to our phone number and our email. Um, if you reach out, uh, we will connect with you and um, yeah, support you in the best way that we can. And I'll pass it on to whoever's next. Thank you. Hi everybody, my name is Ganga. I'm the Interim Assistant Director and Senior Service Coordinator at the Disability Resource Center. Um, service Coordinator um, just means that I meet with students to um, assess any disability related needs or impacts and come up with accommodations. Um, we work with both graduate students and undergraduate students. So thinking about students you're also you know, supporting in your classes, you know, refer them to the DRC. Um, we have a link there getting affiliated. I will be at the fair later. Um, but, you know, we, we have a goal to really serve our students in a holistic way. Um, and we are a, we're, we're confidential, but we're also mandated reporters. So we're more of a private um, resource. So, you know, everything that you share with us and documentation, everything like that is confidential. But, um, you know, we do generally refer to more confidential resources like CARE and CAPS. Um, but if you have any questions, yeah, feel free to come up and see me later. But, you know, we do encourage um, students to affiliate early um, as much as possible. And we can also help walk you through what it means to be a graduate student and also um, what it means to have another role as a TA or, or um, a research assistant. Um, those are paid roles and you can also work with staff HR. So you have two different resources to work with on accommodations. Um, and the accommodations we provide for graduate students can be in the class, but they can also be program accommodations. So looking forward to meeting many of you and welcome, and I'll pass it on to the next person. 
Hi everyone, my name is Jessica Belleri. I work in the Office of Risk Services and I'm the Campus Wellness Program Manager and co-chair of UCSC Healthy Campus Network. Um, the Healthy Campus Network is a collaboration of departments and programs um, that help contribute to a culture of wellness on campus. And you can learn more about what each department is doing by visiting our website that's listed on the slide. Also, as grad student researchers, you can participate in the faculty and staff wellness program, which offers wellness workshops and challenges, um, and that web website is listed um, on the slide of risk.ucsc.edu slash employee wellness. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, my email is listed here as well. It's jbelleri at ucsc.edu. Welcome to campus. Okay, it looks like I'm up next. Hi, everybody. My name is Garrett Naiman, I'm, and I serve as your Dean of Students. Uh, I go by he, him, his pronouns. And uh, basically, my job and, and my, my team uh, who's here with me today uh, is to support you in all kinds of ways outside of the classroom. I know you have all these other resources, including uh, a whole dean of the uh, graduate division uh, whose team is amongst my favorite people on campus. So you're in good hands with all these other folks, too, but we're also here to support. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to uh, the rest of the crew uh, so as not to take a lot of time. But I, I will say this um, in my way of advice. There's a lot of information getting thrown at you right now really quickly. If nothing else, remember the people, our names and our contact information on how to get a hold of us. And we'd be happy to walk through all this with you again. We love working with graduate students. We're here to support you. That's the entire reason we're here. And so if you retain nothing else, just remember who we are, how to find us, and we'll, we'll meet with you again. Also, we'll all, a lot of us will be out at the graduate fair. So if you can make it to that, uh, we look forward to meeting you out there. I'm going to turn it over uh, to my team to talk about some important um, programs and support services. Good afternoon, folks. My name is Brian Arau, he, him, his pronouns, and I'm the Associate Dean of Students. Uh, you know, we wanted to make sure to summarize uh, that, that we do have actually a number of programs operating out of the Dean of Students office that may interest you. Our focus with uh, with our, our slides today is, is really on two of our programs, select support and our basic needs efforts, and I'm going to hand things over to them very shortly, but did want to have this slide to show you um, just so that you understand that we, that we do have, a, a, again, myriad programs available uh, and myriad forms of support. So uh, with that, I want to make sure to keep us moving along, and so I'll facilitate a handoff to my colleague, Betty Desta, who will talk with you about SLUC support. Thank you, Brian. Um, so as you can see, this is currently our team um, for SLUC support. I'll go ahead and start by introducing myself. My name is Betty Desta. I use she and her pronouns, and I am the SLUC support case manager for graduate students. Um, my colleagues, Mariah Lyons, um, is the assistant dean of students um, and director of slug support um, we also have angelique adams and russell mon um, though i will primarily be working with graduate students you may also be working um, with one of my colleagues as well next slide please our so the slug support program um, is short term that means we generally work with students who are facing an acute concern or question, we do offer non-clinical case management. We do holistic assessment with the student to identify areas of need. We connect them to resources, whether that's on or off campus, um, and we offer follow-up meetings as needed. Next slide, please. Our services are generally divided into two. We offer crisis and non-crisis services. Um, crisis services for our office means that a student doesn't have access to food or safe housing for that same day or for the next few days. Um, in this case, we make every effort to connect with the student um, in the same day to make sure that they're connected to um, the resources that they need. Um, our non-crisis services include everything else that we do with students, um, including need-based emergency financial assistance, uh, advocacy, uh, services to campus partners and helping students navigate um, various on-campus processes um, and referrals to um, on-campus and off-campus resources. Next slide, please. Um, so I'll tell you all a little bit about our um, housing resources. When it comes to emergency housing, um, we do offer students temporary emergency housing if a, they don't have access to housing or they don't have access to safe housing for the next few days. We have an on-campus space in family student housing. Um, if for whatever reason um, a student is not able to get placed on campus, we are able to place them off campus at a hotel. 
We offer referrals to community rentals, um, as well as community um, organizations that provide um, emergency assistance for rent. Um, we also provide financial assistance with rent and security deposits. This is need-based, um, and we do um, an assessment with students to, to determine their eligibility for funding from our office. Um, students also have access to free legal consultation um, in regards to questions about their off-campus housing or if they have conflict with a landlord. And just remember, this is for off-campus housing only. Next slide, please. Uh, for food support services, um, in emergency cases, we're able to provide students a grocery gift card so that they can access groceries the same day. We're also able to offer um, swipe meal swipes uh, that students can then access on their student ID card to um, purchase meals in the dining halls. Um, longer term, um, students are welcome to access the Redwood Free Market. I believe our basic needs team will share a little bit more about that. Um, we also offer referrals to other pantries um, on campus and within the community. Um, we also, um, our basic needs team works with students to um, help them sign up for CalFresh if they're eligible. Next slide, please. So these are the ways that you can connect with us. Um, generally, non-urgent referrals should come through the Dean of Students um, at ecsd.edu email. If you are experiencing a basic needs crisis, as I shared before, please call us at our crisis line, which is 831-459-7003. It's operated Monday to Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And a case manager will connect with you or get back to you um, on the same day. Um, generally, we try to connect with students within three business days. Um, please be patient with us um, as the start of fall quarter usually comes with an increased volume of referrals. We'll try to get in touch with you as soon as possible. Um, and I'll pass it over to Ked now. Good afternoon and welcome to UCSC graduate students. So this dog will quickly go over our basic needs, uh, food support services, um, they are for all students um, um, who might need um, some food support throughout their time at UCSC. Next slide. So the first one I'm going to mention, like Betty I just mentioned, the Redwood Free Market, which is looking at which of course in College Eight Cafe, right across the construction for a new dining hall that's happening. Um, so it's um, like I was mentioning, it's free. All you got to do is sign up using your student ID. We have um, a specific grad during student hour, which is Wednesday to 5 p.m. Um, but you are welcome to come at any time that we are open. So that's Monday, you see us keep it right there. And like I mentioned, it's for anybody. Um, we have pantry stables, fresh portals straight from the farm um, that come, that's organic. Um, so yeah, so any, um, you are all welcome to come um, if you are able to. Next slide, please. So that's other food resources on campus. Um, the Cowell Coffee Shop, which is a free cafe for all students. Um, it's looking at Cowell College. Um, right next to the dining hall, um, it's the same process. All you gotta do is um, sign in using your student ID. Um, and you get to go to have um, some, some coffee, bagels, um, um, salad that's made fresh in the cafe by a chef. And we also have produce pop-up, which is usually in the quarry next to the graduates in the comments right outside. Um, yeah, and then also CalFresh. Um, we help students have a CalFresh eligible, eligible. They also um, criteria for graduate students. If you are interested in learning more about CalFresh, please reach, reach out to us at CalFresh at UCS.edu or also the Dean of Students and the Dominican would flow to us. Next slide. Um, yeah, like I mentioned, there's a sp specific criteria for graduate students to, uh, to be eligible for CalFresh. So this is right here. Um, if you have any questions, uh, just feel free to reach out to us. I'll be at the fair. Um, and so um, please come speak to me and I'll be happy to speak to you. Okay, it looks like we were able to get through everyone in time so thank you everyone for keeping on time today and for all of your information thank you everyone who has joined us today for this uh, information session most of us are going to be at the campus resource fair from 3 to 5 p.m today in the quarry plaza so please do come by we would love to get to talk to you more in person um, just once more this information will be available for everybody at the grad division website 
so the slides and the video that was recorded today. So thank you again for, for coming. Please come to the, the quarry and welcome once more to UCSC. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you all at the Quarry Plaza at 3 o'clock.